Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you can hear me and I hope you can see me all right. If um, someone could just let me know that you can hear me and see me, that my mic's working and... Uh, okay, thanks. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Kate. That's very good of you. Okay, good. Okay, we'll just give a couple more minutes to let everyone join. Who wants to join? Okay, great. Well, I hope you're doing well and uh, getting through this, um, these crazy times. <coughs> Hi, Carol. Nice to see you here again. And I uh, hope you're all staying well. Hope you're adjusting to this new way of life, new way of living. I don't know if we'll ever get back to normal. I hope so, at some point. Um, when it will be when we can walk past someone on the street without worrying about it, that'll be a, a big day. But hopefully it won't be very long from now. No, it's, it's not pleasant. But what we've got to do is um, try to make the most of, of this time of isolation to maybe think about what's really important, what's, what's not so important, and to recognize how much our friends and family mean to us and how, how much a hug means and uh, to be able to just hug people you love. So yeah, hopefully when we come out this other side, we'll have a new understanding of what's important and what's not. Anyway, today, so let me just check the time. We've got a minute to go. Um, I'll talk about it in a minute. Just make sure everyone's joined first. But as I say, if you've got any questions for me over the next few, over, over the whole time really, you can put a question in the Q&A and I'll, I'll answer it if I can. So if you've got any questions, I hope you've been enjoying these, these, um, these webinars on a Friday. I will continue to do it as long as people want me to. I hope it's helping you. I hope it's making you maybe think differently about how you can change your life and how hypnosis can help you change your life. I want to wait for everyone else to join. Once again, I want to just draw your attention to um, my painkiller app, which is, you can see here on the screen. It's free to download and we're asking everybody to try it uh, to share it with anyone you know that's in pain, whether it's physical or emotional, because we want feedback. Um, this is the second sort of edition of this painkiller app. Got some great people working on it. Been working on it now for two years. Um, I'm having great results with it. So it's pretty much, it's got my voice on it. It's about 10 minutes. You download it to your iPhone and to your Android phone or to your computer. Put your headphones in if you're in any kind of discomfort or pain. And the... What I always say is that pain has to be useless and unnecessary. I'm not talking about acute pain or a headache that you've, you've had and you haven't checked it out with your doctors. If you've had a pain for a, a days or weeks, make sure you get it checked out medically first. But if the doctor says to you, it's just long-term chronic pain, it's something you've got to put up with, and they're just giving you painkillers to, to resolve it, then download the app. As I said, it's free to download. You have nothing to lose, as I say, except for the pain. So have a go at it. So I say that that should be the right URL. I hope it is. But if not, you can just look it up on um, on your app store or Google store and download it. Okay, anyway. Welcome everybody that's joined me today. And today we are going to be talking about something that affects all of us at some point in our life. And that's weight control or weight loss, um, as it is for most of us. Um, it's easy now to put on weight because foods in the West anyway, it's, it's abundant and it's cheap and we can eat what we want pretty much. So it's quite easy to put on that weight, to eat more calories than we need, to eat more food than we need. But what I'm gonna talk about today is how you can get back control of your body. In fact, I, the title of this was I want my body back. Uh, because it's so easy. We all do it. We turn around, five years are gone, we put on a stone or whatever it might be. So this is about helping you gain that control over your body and your food. So the first thing I want you to do, and I say this to all my clients when they come and see me for weight loss, 
I want you to forget about dieting. Put that word out of your mind. Because the one thing we absolutely know about dieting is what? I imagine a lot of you just shouted in the microphone, it doesn't work long term. Now anyone can cabbage soup diet for six months, lose three stone, lose all your friends, scare off the neighbors, but sooner or later, you're gonna to have to eat normally again. So what I want you to do is forget about dieting, put that word out of your mind. I want you to give yourself permission, and don't be afraid of this, give yourself permission to eat everything you want. Because I don't know about you, but if someone says to me, Freddie, you can't do something, the moment they say oh, I'm not allowed to do something, that's all I'm thinking about. It's just my nature. I want to do it. It's the same when we're on a diet. If you're saying, well, I'm not allowed to eat this, I'm not allowed to eat that, that tends to be all you're thinking about. It's like putting a chocolate eclair in the fridge and going, well, I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. Sooner or later, you're going to give in to that. So I'm going to give you, and you're going to give yourself, permission to eat everything you want. So you're going to go into Sainsbury's, Tesco's, wherever you shop, and so I can eat everything I want in here, but I'm gonna eat these foods because I want to be whatever weight it is you wanna be. So before we get into this, I'm hoping that some of you got access to a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And I want you to do this for me. I want you to write down the weight you'd love to be, whether that's an increase of weight or it's um, a decrease in weight, but write down the weight you'd love to be. If it's a dress size, put that dress size down. But the first thing I want you to do, before you write that number down, is I want you to do this. Put the word realistically out of your mind. You know, I have a lot of clients come to see me, they say, you know, uh, I'd love to be 10 stone, but realistically, if I could be 12 stone, that would be good enough. You know, the thing about weight is this. There is only one question with weight. How bad do you want to look or feel that good? As I say to all my clients, there are some things we cannot change. Otherwise, I'd be taller and I'd have a lot more hair. But weight is not one of those things we can't change. There is only one question, how bad is what I want it? Because we know we can do this, okay? And I want you to do this in a fun and enjoyable way. If anything you do over the next few weeks or months as you get towards your physical goal, if any of those things are not fun, if they're not enjoyable, do not do it. Because find a way of living. If it's not enjoyable and it's not fun, at some point you're going to crack and you're going to give up on it, okay? So I want you to find a way of living. And all of you that listen to this, I know you have the ability to do this. Find a way of living over these next few months that's fun and enjoyable to do, that will lead you enjoyably in a fun way to the goal that you've just written down on that piece of paper. So put the word realistic out of your mind. Write down the weight you'd love to be or the dress size you'd love to be. Do it now. Now, this is, obviously I can't see all of you that are writing down your thing, but this is what we're gonna do. If it's a weight loss goal, we're gonna to look to lose this weight at about two pounds a, a week. Now I'm still working Imperial, so you could say it's a kilo a week, okay? But about two pounds a week. So let's say you've got five stone to lose. You know, I don't think, well, that's a lot of weight to lose. Some people, I've seen people who lose 10 stone. So look, whatever their weight is, Write down the weight you want to be and then figure out in your mind the difference between where you are and where you want to be in, in stones or pounds or kilos for that matter. And then if it's pounds, let's say it's five stone, that's 70 pounds. We halve that figure and that gives you the weeks to lose the weight. So that's 35 weeks, okay? If you're working in kilos, then let's say you've got 20 kilos, so that's 20 weeks. Now we project that out into, we'll change it into months. So let's say it's 20 weeks, that's five months. And we project out into the future from where we are now. So we're June the 19th, I think it is. So June, July, August, September, October, November. So around November the 19th. And I want you to find um, a memorable date. It can be a birthday, an anniversary, but a memorable day, it could be Guy Fawkes night. And I'm not, you know, this is gonna be different for all of you, but project out into the future, the time, the date to achieve your goal and figure that out, and a memorable date, write that down, date to achieve goal, and then put that date in there. And I want you to mark it on your calendar as well. 
date to achieve goal. No one else has to know you're, you're going to do this, okay? So now you've got um, an, an exciting goal and it's time bound. Now, not just for your weight control, your weight um, goals, but for everything you do in your life. Two things have to be in place for you to actually achieve a goal. It has to be exciting. Something that's going to get you up in the morning, get you working. It's got to be exciting and it's got to be time bound. You know, so many people come to see me and they say, Freddie, you know, I'd love to lose some weight at some point in the future. That is of no consequence at all. You know, it has to be an exact goal and something's going to be exciting and it has to be time bound. Otherwise, we keep putting it off. So now you've got those two things on that piece of paper or you've got those two figures in your mind. Now I want you to do this. If you have got a piece of paper in front of you, I want you to do this. I want you to write down as many reasons to achieve your physical goal, but they must all start with I will or I can, okay? So I will feel great. I'll be able to play with my kids. I'll be more energized. I'll be healthier. You know, I'll be able to wear the clothes I want. I'll feel more confident. They must all start with I will or I can, okay? And write them down. Put you know, everything else out of your mind and just write those goals down. Write those reasons to achieve your goal down. And while you're doing that, you know, I'm gonna tell you about this um, bit of research they did. Now, someone said this is not actually true, but it's been around for so long, I like to think it is true. That back in the 1950s, there were some psychologists, they went into Harvard University and they asked the graduating students that year, how many have actually written down their life goals? Now, 3% of those students had actually taken the time out to write down their life goals. Now they followed this bit of, this bit of um, research up 20 years later and they found that the 3% that had written down their life goals had achieved more in financial terms than the other 97% put together. Now we know, because they do it with brain scanning and all this, this new technology now, that when you're actually committing your goals to paper, whatever it might be, you are actually creating new neuro pathways towards achieving that goal. When we write those things down, and get that picture in your mind of how you're gonna look and how you're gonna feel when you achieve your goals, right? So now you've written those goals down. I want you to commit to this. Just sign the bottom as if it's a contract with yourself. And it doesn't matter whether you, anyone else sees this piece of paper. You can put it on the fire, you can put it in your handbag, put it in your pocket, put it on, put it on post to Father Christmas. It doesn't matter. But now you've written down those goals and you've got a clear view of where you wanna be you're going to find yourself moving towards it, okay? So as I said at the beginning, put the, put the word dieting out of your mind, put that out of your mind. I'm going to give you permission to eat everything you want. But what's going to happen today, because I'm going to hypnotize you, is this. You are going to enjoy your food even more. I want you to become a connoisseur. You know, every client that comes to see me, my goal for them is they enjoy their life even more, not less. You know, so become a connoisseur. If you've cooked a meal for yourself or someone's cooked a meal for you, the least we can do is take the time out to taste it. And most of us don't. You now we're busy talking, we're busy doing something else, we've eaten that meal before we even know we've eaten it. So I want you to become a connoisseur. If you put herbs and spices and flavorings in your food, then take the time out, chew that food so you can taste what you've put in it. Become a connoisseur. It's the same for everything I want you to do in your life. Become a connoisseur of life. You know, everything that you could possibly enjoy. You know, the, the sunshine, the rain, you know, a glass of wine, whatever it might be. Become a connoisseur. Take the time out to enjoy your life even more. So with your food, taste it. Now, two things happen if you chew your food just a tad more. One, you're going to have time to taste it. And the second thing is it's going to slow you down a tad. Now, they say that it takes 10 minutes for your stomach to register that you've swallowed something. Now, most of us, and I'm guilty of this, I have to tell you, we eat so quickly that by the time our stomach registers we've eaten enough, we've already eaten too much. So by chewing your food, tasting your food, taking the time out to taste it, it's gonna slow you down a tad. And that's gonna help you recognize when you've eaten enough, okay? So, Enjoy your food even more. Eat what you want. There are no limits. I have people in my hometown here and people I'm hoping throughout the world that I've worked with who are losing weight. And when people say, how are you losing the weight? They say, well, Freddie said I could eat what I want and lose the weight. And that's what's happening. 
because they're no longer focused on it. They're no longer focused on, on not eating food or not having what they want. So this is what's going to happen when I hypnotize you. At some point, I'm going to get your instinctive, intuitive, unconscious part of your being, the part that's there for your survival, to recognize when you're eating, to recognize when you've swallowed enough food, to stay healthy, energized, well, and satisfied, but at the same time lose the excess weight you want to lose, whatever that might be. And when that point is reached, before even thinking about it, the desire to eat any more food off that plate or that table will be gone. And the weight is going to drop off you. The actual physical ability to swallow any more food off that plate will be gone. And the feeling of empowerment you're going to get when you put your knife and fork down and say, I've eaten enough, it's going to be immense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, we have a, a problem in... It's the British culture. It's our culture to eat everything that's put in front of us. As children, we're told, you know, it's not good to leave food because there are children that are starving in Africa. In my time when I was a kid, it was by Afra. You know, eat that food up. Your father's worked really hard for it. It's terrible to waste food. I want you to understand that it's okay to leave food on your plate. You do not have to clear that plate. The moment your brain registers you've eaten enough, you're going to put your knife and fork down and the feeling of empowerment is going to be immense. You're going to take what's on your plate and you're going to put it in the bin. Because if you put it on the side, it's human nature, you're going to go and pick at it. So you're going to get up from the table the moment you think I've eaten enough, put it in the bin. And the weight is going to drop off you. You know, some years ago, I was working with a group of people for weight loss, maybe 40, 50 people in the room. And I said, this is what we're going to do. <clears throat> and you're going to get up and you're going to put food in the bin. And the lady said, well, I think that's terrible. It's disgusting to waste food when there are children that are starving in Africa. And I know I was a bit sort of, I don't know what the word would be, but I said to her, look, take a photograph of yourself, five stone overweight and send that photograph to some starving child in Africa or India and with a note saying, I've sent you this photograph because I want you to know I haven't wasted the food. And see how much better it makes that kid feel. That's not gonna make that kid feel one jot better. As I said to this lady, if you really want out those kids in Africa and India, start by putting your food in the bin because after a while you'll start cooking yourself less food. And if you're saving 20 pounds a month on your food bill, because you're not just putting it in your mouth, then send that kid, that kid the 20 pounds. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying rather than eat that food because you don't want to waste it. So look, we say these things and we all say it and it sort of makes sense until someone points it out to you. You know, by doing this, by recognizing when you've eaten enough, when you're recognized when you're satisfied, by doing that, you'll be able to lose weight anywhere. You better go to an Indian restaurant, Chinese restaurant, Italian restaurant, and still lose weight. You know, up until now, we've been at the mercy of some young kid in that Chinese restaurant kitchen who's decided this is how much Freddie's going to eat tonight, how much Carol's going to eat tonight. And because we paid for that food, and because, um, because it's there, we're going to eat it all. You know, whereas the feeling of empowerment for you to be able to say that was delicious, but I've eaten enough and leave food on your plate, it's going to be immense. I once took my, uh, one of my daughter-in-laws, we went to a place called Cosmo. It's uh, one of those eat as much as you like restaurants. It's a beautiful restaurant and she's a fabulous girl. And we went to this restaurant and we walked along and it sat on the window, you know, whatever it was, 25 pounds, um, Thai cuisine, eat as much as you like. And she said, oh, it's fantastic. She said, you know, eat as much as you want. Eat as much as you can. That's what she said. I said, no, it doesn't say eat as much as you can. It says eat as much as you like. But you go into those restaurants and you'll see people and that's what they're doing. They're eating as much as they can. They think I'll pay 25 pounds. I'm going to have 30 pounds worth of food. And they come out and they're stuffed. And if you ask them what it tasted like, they won't even tell you how it tasted because they're so busy thinking about how much they can eat for their 25 quid. So look, I'm saying to you, 
enjoy your life even more, enjoy your food even more, uh, be a connoisseur. But the moment you recognize that you've eaten enough, put your knife and fork down and say that was great. And by doing this, you'll be able to eat anywhere. I live in, in Yorkshire. Uh, I'm from Kent, you can probably tell from my accent. But I live in, in Yorkshire. And in Yorkshire, I'm sure it's the same for everyone. My, you know, my, my mother-in-law is a Yorkshire lady. So wherever you go, if, if you ask for a cup of tea, if I go around to her house, ask for a cup of tea, or she says, we'd like a cup of tea, I'll say yes, and out will come a plate of biscuits. It's their culture in Yorkshire to feed you. And they don't do it, out, they're not malicious. They do it because they love you. They do it because they want to please you. But be aware of when you're being fed and take back that bit of control. If you really want to achieve your physical goals, to be polite about it and say, look, I've just eaten. It's been you know, really nice to you, but thanks, I've eaten. No, it's okay to say no thanks when people are feeding you. So look, there's all these different things. I'm hoping you're maybe writing them down, taking a note of them. So the first thing, forget about dieting, put it out of your mind. Set your goal, make it time bound, make it an exciting goal. You're gonna eat until you, to, and you're gonna enjoy your food even more, but you're gonna recognize when you swallowed enough food to stay healthy, energized, satisfied and well. And the moment that point is reached, it's gonna happen because I'm gonna hypnotize you anyway, you'll find yourself putting your knife and fork down. And the feeling of empowerment is gonna be immense. You know, to be able to have a piece of chocolate and put the wrapper back on and put it in the fridge for two days. To open a bag of crisps and have a few crisps without having to drain that last crumb out as some of us do. You know, it's gonna be immense for you. To be able to say, I can eat what I want, to have a biscuit without having three. It's gonna be great because you can say, I can eat what I want. You're gonna take back control of your life. And that's gonna happen, right? The desire for sweet, sugary foods may be gone. And there's a big difference thinking I need a piece of chocolate and I want a piece of chocolate, as I've said in a couple of the other webinars. That difference between needing and wanting. And I want you to be able to say, I fancy a bit of chocolate, I'm gonna have a piece of chocolate, without panicking over it, without thinking, well, that's it, I'm useless to this, to this, I've fallen off the wagon, I might as well eat whatever I wanna eat now. I want you to enjoy your food and enjoy your life. Eat what you want, okay? But recognize when you've eaten enough and take back that bit of control. Right, so the other thing, obviously we can, there's a couple of ways of losing weight. One is to take in less calories and the other one is burn up more calories. So find a way of moving that's gonna get your heart working for about 15 or 20 minutes a day. And it doesn't have to be going to the gym. I hate standing on a treadmill and just walking and running on the treadmill. Not that I can run now, but you know, being on that, it's the most boring thing in the world. Even running on the streets boring for me. But some people love it. And if, it's, if that's what you love, then great. But find a way of moving. You know, if you love dance, you know, push the chairs back, put your favorite music on, have 20 minutes, let your hair down, close the curtains if you like, but have some time moving. If you like running, go for a run. If you like walking, go for a run. If your shops are not that far away and you haven't got a lot of shopping to get, take a walk, but find 15 minutes, eat back maybe two or three times a week to get your heart working. Because they say, and as I said, I'm not, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a sports scientist, but they, it's been said that whatever you're burning calories up at, after a 15, 30 minute aerobic exercise, that's something that gets your heart working. What, whatever calories you're burning up after 15 or 30 minutes, your body's gonna continue to burn at that rate for the next 20, 48 hours. And that's why when people go to the gym once a week and work out like a maniac, they don't lose any weight because you're not gonna do it. But if you work out three times a week, and that can be your housework. If you do your own housework, imagine you've got George Clooney coming to see or Nicole Pfeiffer or whatever her name is. You know, get your hoover out, go for it. You know, if you're ironing, use your ironing. You're gonna turn, it's gonna be two things gonna happen there. You're gonna turn what used to be a chore into something that's helping you achieve your physical goals and you're gonna have more time during the day. You know, imagine that you've got to get that work done in half an hour. Instead of doing it in your slippers and your dressing gown, put your tracksuit on. You know, get into mode and then do your housework at a pace. The weight is going to drop off you. Okay, these are things you can do without spending a fortune on gym membership. I'm sure most of you, like me, have got a gym membership. You go for the first month, then you forget about it. You know, so you don't need to go to the gym. In fact, 
all of you that are watching this, if you let me know, I'll send you what I call the Jack Queen rope workout. It's a simple technique um, that I developed a few years back with a single piece of rope, and it's not skipping. It's just about using your own body weight. But I'll send you that book for free, okay? You can get it on Amazon, I believe, but I'll send it to you. It's a simple way of, of getting your, um, of toning your body, if you like. I'm not talking about being Arnie Schwarzenegger. I'm talking about just being toned. Because the more muscle tone you have, the more calories you're going to burn. It takes more calories to work your muscles efficiently than it does to lay down a spat. So when you put on some muscle weight or just tone your muscles, the calories you're taking in are going to be burnt differently. So there's all these simple things you can do to achieve your physical goals. And I'm going to hypnotize you in a while. I'm going to get you into that mode where you want to be what you want to be and let go of any limitations. You know, it's easy. We can say, I mean, I'm, I'm 68 now and I've got five grandchildren. My youngest grandchild's 18 and the rest of them in their 20s. And it's legitimate now. I could grow a long white beard. I could grow my hair out, what's left of it. I could wear a scabby old jumper, smoke a pipe, sit in a chair with my slippers on. No one's gonna say anything because I am a granddad and I'm allowed to grow a, a long beard and wear a scabby old jumper. But I'm vain. I still wanna get my shirt off and people go, oh yeah, he looks pretty good. You know, so whatever drives you, it's okay. We can make excuses. But if you really want to do this, look in the mirror, decide what you want to be, because you're not going to hear it from other people. You know, you, this has to come from within you. No one's going to say to me, Freddie, well, you know, you're out of shape or you're overweight or whatever else. If I really want to have the body I want, and I am quite greedy about that, then I have to do what I have to do. My, I said to my wife once, I said, you're making me fat. She just laughed. She said, well, you'd moan if I didn't put nice things in the fridge. You'd moan if I didn't cook you nice dinners. She is absolutely right. And so if I want my body to be a certain way, if you want your body to be a certain way, you have to take back control of that. I hear it so often, you know, um, I would lose weight if only my husband didn't buy me chocolates. I would lose weight if my wife didn't cook me so, so many potatoes. I would lose weight if all the women in my family weren't big boned. You know, I hear all of these excuses. Now, I'm going, to, I'm going to say this because it's not just about weight loss. But when you say those words to yourself, I would if only, if that if only is outside of your own head, then all you are are victims of circumstance. The moment you say, I am taking back responsibility for me, for my body, my happiness, my health, then you can do something about it. But we do it. It's human nature to say, well, I would if only. If that if only is outside of your skull, then all you are is a victim of circumstance. And I know you don't want to be that. So listen to those words. And if you find yourself saying it, draw it back and then take responsibility for how you want to be. Because you can change and it's not difficult. You know, there are simple things to do. Um, they say that our body, and I suppose our brain, can hardly tell the difference between hunger and thirst. Now, most of us, and I know I'm guilty of it, we do not drink enough water. And I'm not talking about cups of coffee, cups of tea, I'm talking about water. And we don't drink enough water, but your body can hardly tell the difference between hunger and thirst. And a lot of the time, when we think, oh, I'm hungry, I want something to eat, it's water your body actually needs. So I'm gonna to suggest to you, and you can try this for a week and see what happens. If you're thinking about eating, First, have a glass of water. And 60, 70% of the time, you'll find that, that glass of water satisfies that need because it's, your, it's what your body needs. It's not the food. If you're still hungry after drinking a glass of water, fine, eat something. But you'll find by doing that, you'll recognize that that is what your body needs. So these are just simple things that I've, I've helped people with over the years. It's not difficult. Drink a tad more water. Lots of things happening. Your digestive system will work better. You'll feel, you'll, you'll feel satisfied quicker if, you're, if you drink water before, before a meal. All of these simple things you can do, okay? So I'm going to hypnotize you. I'm going to get you to focus on exactly how you want to be and let go of any limitations. Because if you can see yourself achieving what you want to achieve and you can absolutely believe that you can do it, 
and you're willing to make the effort, and it's not going to be much of an effort, it's just a few tweaks in the way you're living, then the weight's going to drop off you. You know, think about it. You're maybe only a few weeks, a few months away from having your body back. And why would we not? And I'm going to say this, and it's harsh, I know. But being five stone overweight, three stone overweight, two stone overweight, is the thing that's going to kill you early. Beyond anything else you're doing, weight is going to be the thing. If you, and I'm, I'm, this is quite harsh, but you go to these old people's homes, you will not see anyone in those old people's homes that are seriously overweight. And the reason you don't is because they don't make it. You know, you can add years to your life just by starting to think about what you're eating. There was a, a professor, some, um, some kind of brilliant researcher, and he spent 25 years looking into longevity. And after 25 years of research, this is what it came down to. He said, eat a tad less. That's, that was his, all of that research, 25 years, that's what it came down to. You know, enjoy your life, enjoy your food, enjoy a glass of wine, but recognize when your body's drunk enough or eaten enough to stay healthy and well, and then have the power and take responsibility and say, that was great, I've had enough. Okay. Enough talking about how we're going to lose this weight. Find fun ways to, to uh, exercise, get your heart working, whatever that is. You know, spend 10, 15 minutes a day. Take that time out for yourself. Pencil it into your diary because it's important to you. You know, people say, well, I'd love to exercise, but I don't have the time. You know, you've got to find the time. You know, what's half an hour a day? You know, three and a half hours a week compared to the 156 hours that you spend doing other things during the week. Find the time for yourself. Understand you're worth doing it for. You know, most of you know how to lose weight. There's enough information out there. You know, I often have women come to see me and I've got a granddaughter of 14, 15. And I say, if your granddaughter came to you and said, Nan or Grandma, I'm overweight, I'm unhappy, it's making me feel bad. I'd say you would take them for a walk. You would say, right, I'm gonna cook you the right foods. I would come, I'm going to help you exercise. You would do it for someone you love. So start showing yourself the same love and the same care as you would to someone else that asked for your help. And you can do this. And the other thing is, and again, you know, it might be a bit harsh, but if you're a therapist, if you're a hypnotherapist, any other kind of therapist out there who have clients who want to lose weight or want to achieve physical goals, and you are not happy with the weight you are, if you are not, if you're overweight and you're not happy about it, then there's a lack of credibility. When you sit down in your chair and say, I'm gonna help you lose weight. And I'm not saying we all need to be supermodels, but what I'm saying to you is that we should, if we're therapists and we're saying I can help you, we should at least be striving to be the best we can be. That's all I'm saying. And it is, might be harsh, but if you've got your own fears and phobias and people are coming and see you with their fears and phobias and you've not overcome yours, you need to ask that question. Do I have a right to sit in this chair and say to you, I can help you? Because if not, then think about that. Try and strive to be the best you can be. So you can sit in your therapy chair and say, I can help you achieve what you want. And you can say that from your heart. Okay, just a thought. But anyway, look, I'm going to hypnotize you. You know how to do this. I'm going to ask your unconscious mind, the part of you that runs your eating and weight control behavior, because I skipped this bit. I'm going to talk about it now. When we create any sort of learnt behavior, and eating for comfort or for boredom is a learnt behavior. Eating more than you want is a learnt behavior. It might happen when you're five or six and you're made to sit at the table and finish your food, but it's learnt. And like everything else we learn, once it's learnt to the point it becomes automatic, you no longer have conscious control over it. It would be like me saying, I want you to forget how to drive or forget how to walk or forget how to speak. You say, well, that's impossible. It's no longer something I think about. It's something I just do. And that's what happens with habitual snacking and eating. It becomes an automatic process, an automatic program that's just running. And it's it, in that moment when you said, or your parent or someone said to you, you mustn't leave that food, you went, remind me, if ever I eat, finish the plate. Make sure I eat it all. If I'm unhappy or I'm hurt, eat something sweet, drink something sweet. And while we're on the subject of drinking something sweet, this is the one common denominator with everyone I have seen as a therapist for people who are overweight. Every client that's been seriously overweight, the common denominator is this one thing. They all drink Diet Coke. 
or diet Pepsi or some kind of diet drink. So I'm going to suggest to you, if you're trying to lose weight and you're drinking diet Coke or diet Pepsi, because you think it's going to help, put it out of your mind, put it out of your life. I've been saying it for years and it's been proved now that if Pepsi or Coca-Cola could create a drink that actually help people lose weight, they'd be out of business in six months because people wouldn't need it. It's in their interest to put stuff in that drink that's going to keep weight on you. I think it's called a Spartan, if I'm right. Now, what it does, it actually makes fat cling to your body. So I would suggest to you, any fizzy drinks, if you can cut them out, cut them out. Swap it for water or maybe some fruit juice, but change those fizzy drinks. That is the one common denominator with everyone that I've seen that's been seriously overweight. So anyway, just a thought. So I'm going to get you into a state of hypnosis. I'm going to speak directly to the part of you that is responsible for your eating, weight control and metabolism, and it will communicate. I'm going to ask it to explain why you've put the weight on, what it's trying to fulfill for you, why you've been snacking or comfort eating or overeating. I'm then going to ask out of your creative mind, the part of you that dreams, has ideas and makes plans, and allow that wonderful creative mind to run and flow and work and come up with lots of new choices, enjoyable foods that will lead you to your goal, fun ways of moving that will lead you to your goal. And then I'm going to ask you to take those new choices and integrate it into your body and your mind at a molecular cellular level. And when that happens, I promise you, the weight's going to drop off you rapidly, safely, and enjoyably. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So if you're ready to go into hypnosis, you're ready to make these changes in your life, what I'd like you to do is this, get comfortable. Whatever happens next, the chair will support you. If the internet for any reason goes down, you will come out of hypnosis at some point in the future. And by that, I mean next few minutes, not three weeks from now, okay? So get comfortable, make sure you're safe. So you're sitting comfortably and you're safe. And when you're ready to make these changes, when you're ready to go into hypnosis, take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, just allow your eyes to close. Only as quickly as you're ready to make these physical changes that you want. That's right, once again, focus on those tiny muscles around your eyes. Imagine your temples massaged. And allow those eyes to relax completely. Just for a while, nobody wants anything, no one expects anything. And there's nothing for you to do but to relax. Imagine your eyes are relaxing so completely they just won't work. Imagine that's happened automatically now. Every word I say now is going to relax your body even more. Feel that thing of relaxation going down through your jaw. Your tongue relaxing in your mouth. Your throat relaxing. That thing spreading to your neck muscles. Imagine having your shoulders massaged and all that stress and tension just disappearing from those shoulders now. And let that feeling of relaxation spread down into your arms, your biceps, triceps, your forearms, your wrists, your hands, your fingers. Let your arms relax completely now, loose, heavy and relaxed. And as you do that, you may become aware of certain sensations. You may become aware of your pulse or your heart beating. As you relax even more, the muscles in your back, stomach and chest. And just for a moment, focus on your breathing. Imagine you're breathing in calm. And you're breathing out tension. You're breathing in calm. And you're breathing out doubt. And once again, just repeat those words as you continue to breathe like that now. I recognize the good within you. Thank you. I care about you. And I want you to be well. And let that calm feeling spread down into your stomach muscles, your hips, your legs, your calves, your ankles, feet and toes. Let every muscle relax now. It's like a handful of rubber bands thrown on that chair, all loose and relaxed. Because with the eyes closed, you can continue to relax. 
Although at times you may be more aware of some things than you were before. The sounds in the room, the comfort of the chair, the sound of my voice, certain sensations, the beating of your heart, and the thoughts and images that drift into the mind automatically. Once again, See the faces of the people you love, people that love you. See those smiles fill out love right now. Let that remind you of your real worth, your real value, just how loved you are. Go out into the future, weeks from now, months from now. You've achieved your physical goal, you're looking and feeling incredible and you've got your health and energy back. And I want you to notice the way you move and the way you breathe. See yourself there having achieved that wonderful goal. See the look on the face of the people you love as you step through those doors. Step into that body. Feel what it feels like to have your body back, to have your life back. That feeling of confidence, that feeling of energy, that feeling of achievement. The unconscious mind can allow those changes to occur. That's right. As the unconscious mind begins, that gradual letting go. Letting go even of the effort it takes to make the effort that it might take. To tell the exact position of arms, legs or the entire body now that seems to drift through time and space. That wonderful free floating place of effortless relaxation, letting go. As you continue to learn even more than before about your abilities, your capacities to learn as you relax. And the mind begins to drift down toward that place of quietness, a place of peaceful inner awareness, a place that almost seems to give off signals that directs awareness down toward it, into it. More and more comfortably, more and more effortlessly, more and more completely and deeply than before. Where even the effort it takes to be aware of the sound of my voice or the meaning of my words may almost seem to be too much effort to bother making. It's so much easier simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. Allowing events to occur in your own time, in your own way, drifting down. Deeper, deeper, deeper down now. 10, 20, 100 times deeper. Imagine you're just dropping down through space and time, down toward a place of total bliss. Imagine you had a bliss anesthesia. Your body is just drifting into the most wonderful space. And as you drift even deeper, my voice, my words will drift with you to become a part of your experience now. And every word I say takes you even deeper. Everything I say now becomes your reality. Every suggestion I give you, you'll act upon, carry out without hesitation. It's now your reality. You'll see what I say you can see. You'll feel what I say you can feel. You'll hear what I say you can hear. Believe what I say you believe as you go deeper, deeper, deeper down now. Because you have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. And that unconscious mind, the back of the mind, can continue to hear, to understand and respond to those things I might say without the need for you to do anything at all. It's so much easier for the conscious mind simply to relax and enjoy that letting go. That's right, letting go of the effort it takes, to make the effort that it might take, to tell the exact position of arms, legs, or the entire body now that seems to drift through time and space that wonderful free floating place of effortless relaxation and letting go. Allowing events to occur in their own time, in their own ways, you drift as a mind. And that mind drifts without boundaries, without borders, without limits. Once again, see yourself out there having achieved your physical goal, looking and feeling fantastic. Notice the way you move, the way you breathe, the energy, the confidence, step into that body, feel what it feels like to have that energy back, have your health back, to have that confidence back. 
Look back to now and notice the things you did along the way that led to that feeling, the wonderful foods that you ate, the fun ways of moving that got your heart working. The unconscious mind can allow those changes to occur while the conscious mind drifts off someplace else entirely now. That's right, in your own time, in your own way, aware of events that occur along the way. As the unconscious mind utilizes that opportunity to alter your awareness and to continue that learning in whatever way is the right way for you. Learning that feeling of letting go, allowing the unconscious to assume more and more responsibility for guiding, directing awareness as you continue to learn even more than before about your abilities, your capacities to learn as you relax. As you relax and enter into the trance more and more comfortably, more and more effortlessly, more and more completely and deeply than before. And I can wonder whether you're aware that you've drifted deeply into hypnosis. Because the deeper you go, the better you feel. The better you feel, the deeper you go, 10, 20, 100 times deeper now. Imagine just dropping down through space and time, down toward that place of empowerment and bliss. And as you drift even deeper, you can use your unconscious mind as a resource you can learn from and really have an experience now, one that's satisfactory to you. And all that's needed to build a good rapport with the unconscious is to have a line of communication. Sometimes the unconscious communicates by movement. It may be that the eye reflex changes and the eyes flicker or the head moves slightly to indicate yes, or a muscle twitches involuntarily. That's right, you can try and keep those eyes still for they flicker even more. It may be that the left hand moves all by itself, starts to feel lighter and lighter, starts to drift up to indicate yes, or the right arm goes even higher. Only the unconscious mind knows, which it will use as a yes signal. Because the unconscious mind knows more about you than anyone else. And so as you drift deeply into hypnosis, even deeper than before, I'd like your unconscious mind to search through all the things in your life and pick one thing, one thing that is of vital and utmost importance to your future, your confidence, your energy, your heart, your lungs, your well-being, your appearance, something you'd love to change, a way you'd love to feel once again, something that no longer suits you, and when the unconscious mind's made that choice, I'd like it to increase those signals so that you understand that it's made that choice. That's right, one thing that is of vital and utmost importance to your confidence, to your energy, your freedom, your well-being, your health, your heart, your lungs, something you'd love to achieve or a way you'd love to feel once again. And when the unconscious mind's made that choice, I'd like it to increase those signals. And as the unconscious mind searches, the mind automatically moves toward those thoughts and ideas, images that clarify most clearly for you the very things you know and do that seem to get in the way of achieving your physical goals. Awareness migrates toward things that need attention, the same way animals migrate without thinking or trying. They just seem to know when to go, where to go, what to do to take care of themselves. Now I'd like your unconscious mind to hand over those signals to the part of you that is responsible for your eating, weight control and metabolism. And when it's taken full control of those physical signals, I'd like it to increase those signals so that you understand it's taken control. That's right, and as you become aware of that movement, as you become aware of those signals increasing, I'd like to ask that part that runs the eating weight control metabolism to explain to you at some level of consciousness what it is that it's been trying to achieve for you, what it's trying to fulfill for you, why you've put the weight on. And when you fully understand what that part has been trying to achieve for you, when you fully understand what its positive intention is, I'd like it to increase those signals so that you understand, that you know the reason. Now I'd like to ask that part that runs the eating weight control metabolism 
to go to your creative mind, the part of you that dreams, has ideas and makes plans and allow that wonderful creative mind to run and flow and work and come up with lots of new choices, enjoyable foods that will lead you effortlessly to your weight goal, fun ways of moving and getting your heart working that will lead you effortlessly and automatically to your goal. Each time it identifies a new choice that it believes is fun and enjoyable to do, that will lead you to that goal that you've written on that paper or you have in your mind, the moment each time it identifies a new choice, I want it to increase those signals so that you understand that it's making those choices for you. I'd like to reassure that part that runs the eating weight control metabolism. It doesn't have to take any of the new choices. It doesn't have to give up the snacking, overeating, comfort eating. It simply has to go in and get lots of new choices. Each time it identifies a new choice that it believes is at least if not more enjoyable and fun to do, that will keep you healthy and allow you to lose the excess weight, I want it to increase those signals. It's working brilliantly for you. 10, 20, 100 new choices now. And as that part searches, I want you to have the experience of doing some time traveling. The chair you're in is a time machine. You are going to go back through time as if time doesn't exist. But you're going to go back with all the understandings you have now as an adult, all the understandings you have now, maybe as a parent or a mother or a father or a grandmother. You're going to go back to the very first moment that relates to the overeating, comfort eating, boarding, boredom eating. And I want you to be brave about this because you're going to go back as you are now with the strength, the understandings, the learnings you have now. You're going to go back to that very first moment. You will remember where you were, you remember you were with. As I snap my fingers, that chair is going to get sucked back through time as if time doesn't exist. Get ready. And you're back there now with that younger you. I want you to walk that younger you through that experience. You remember where you were, remember you were with. Drop down beside that younger you with the strength you have now and the understandings you have now. And walk that younger th you through that experience. Tell that younger you what they need to know to be the best they can be, to have the life they want, the health they want. Take any learnings, any, any strengths from that event, storming that part of your mind. And when you're ready to lose the weight, when you're ready to have the health and the life you want, I want you to give that younger you a hug. I want you to thank them for going through the experience for you. Tell them you survived it. And then give them a hug and say goodbye. Do it now. Now step over that line into your future. Turn around and see that younger you with a smile on their face, waving goodbye as you free them forever. And close that door behind you. And now I'd like to ask that part that runs the eating weight control behavior to pick as many new choices, enjoyable foods that will lead you to your goal, fun ways of exercising that will lead you to that goal. And when it's made those choices for you, I want it to increase those signals so that you and I understand. Now I'd like to ask that part to integrate these new choices into your body and mind at a molecular, cellular, neuron level that will allow you to lose the weight rapidly, safely and enjoyably. And when it's done that and integrated into your body and your mind, I want it to increase those signals so that you and I understand that it's done that for you. That's right, I want it to spin up your metabolism to help you lose that weight even more rapidly and do it now. I'd like to thank that part that runs the eating weight control metabolism for communicating and making those changes now. And I know you're going to remember it thoroughly later on. From today, the need to snack, comfort, eat, boredom meat has gone from your body and your mind. The need for sweet, sugary foods and drinks has gone from your body and your mind. From today, the weight is going to drop off you. Whenever you sit down for a meal, the moment your instinctive, intuitive, unconscious mind, the part that's there for survival, recognises that you've swallowed enough food to stay healthy, energised and well, but at the same time allowing you the freedom from the need to snack. The moment it recognises you've swallowed enough food to stay healthy and energised, but at the same time lose the excess weight, 
the moment that point is reached, before the food even reaches your stomach, the desire to eat any more food off that plate or that table will be gone. The physical ability to swallow any more food off that plate or the table will be gone. You'll find yourself putting your knife and fork down. And the feeling of empowerment is going to be immense and the weight is going to drop off you. From today, whenever you sit down for a meal, the moment your instinctive, intuitive mind recognizes you swallowed enough food to stay healthy and energized and well, but at the same time lose the excess weight, before that food even reaches your stomach, the desire to eat any more food off that plate or that table will be gone. And the weight is going to drop off you rapidly, safely and enjoyably. Even if at first you have to pretend it was something was said to you, something was done to you, you really have no choice. The weight's dropping off you and there's nothing you can do about that. From today, the need to snack, comfort, eat, boredom, eat, overeat has gone from your body. You're going to enjoy your food even more, enjoy your life even more, and the weight's going to drop off you. I'd like to thank that part that runs the eating and weight control behavior for communicating and making those changes now. And I know you're going to remember it thoroughly later on. Once again, see yourself out there with the people you love, people that love you. You've lost that weight. You're looking and feeling great. See the smiles on their faces as you step through those doors. Go and step into your body and feel what it feels like. The confidence, the feeling of freedom, the feeling of achievement, the confidence. See it clearly, feel it clearly. Because now you know where you're going and now you know how to get there. It's not a force on this planet that's going to keep you from achieving your physical goals. Go over with your unconscious often as you need to, to know that you're free. Free of the need for sweet, sugary, snacky foods. Free of the need to overeat, comfort eat or boredom eat. And from today, whenever you go to eat, you'll hear my voice in your head with these words. Why are you about to eat? Is it because you're bored, emotional, or hungry? And if the answer comes back on bored or emotional, you will do anything other than eat, and the weight's gonna drop off you. From today, whenever you look in the biscuit cupboard, the fridge, your biz farm right beside you, whispering in your ear, why are you about to eat? Is it because you're bored, emotional, or hungry? And if the answer comes back on bored or emotional, you'll do anything other than eat and the weight's gonna drop off you rapidly, safely, and enjoyably. Go over with your unconscious often as you need to, to know you can and you will achieve your physical goals. Only when the unconscious mind knows and has made those changes at a molecular, cellular, neuron level, and allows the conscious mind to accept the changes made. Because in a moment, I'm gonna to count to 10. Every suggestion I've given you, you'll act upon and carry out without hesitation. It's now your reality. On eight, your eyes will open. You're going to feel incredible. A steely determination, a feeling of freedom you may have never experienced before. And on 10, that feeling of empowerment is going to grow stronger day by day as the weight drops off you rapidly, safely, and enjoyably. Get ready. As I count to 10, on eight, your eyes will open. You'll feel incredible. Every suggestion I've given you, you'll act upon. And on 10, that feeling of empowerment is going to grow stronger day by day as the weight drops off you rapidly, easily, automatically, and enjoyably. And imagine there is nothing you can do about that now. One, feeling absolutely wonderful. Two, to achieve your physical goals and do it in a fun and enjoyable way. Three, a feeling of freedom from the need to snack, comfort, eat, boredom, eat, overeat. Four, feel a force of that energy and freedom flooding your body and your mind, kick-starting your metabolism and moving the weight off you even as I speak. Five, feeling incredibly alive now. Six, seven, eight, eyes opening, feeling absolutely wonderful. Nine, ten. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's session. And I wish you all the best in your quest to achieve your physical goals. You absolutely can do this. Treat yourself to the body you want. Treat yourself to the health you want. You can offer yourself large portions of self-confidence, large portions of self-esteem, and the weight's going to drop off you.
Become a connoisseur, not only of your food, but of everything in your life. Enjoy it to the max. I wish you all well. Thanks for joining me today. If you've got any questions, please ask me and I'll answer them. And um, once again, if you email me, that'll be the, the easiest thing to do. Email me at freddy.jackqueen at gmail.com and say you want my book and I will email it to you. It's um, very simple, um, the Jack Queen Rope Workout. You'll love it. I know you will. Uh, he's got some ideas for different ways of eating as well. So I'll willingly send that to you if you like to have it. If you've got any questions, please ask. I see there is one question. Let me see if I can answer it. Um, oh, it's just a thank you from uh, Amanda King from the college. And while I'm on the subject of the College of Medicine, if you're not already a member, then visit the site. You've got the, the URL up there. Visit College of Medicine Integrated Health. They are doing more on the planet for integrating alternative and the normal medical kind of science uh, to help people. So have a look, it's a wonderful site. Once we're out of lockdown, they'll be running live seminars. I know they're gonna be running uh, online seminars where you can continue to learn and continue to increase your knowledge about helping other people. It's a wonderful site. So if you're not a member already, you can join. It's worth every penny of whatever the membership is. And I can't even tell you what that is now, but it's not a lot of money for what you're going to get, the benefit you're going to get from that, okay? So um, thanks, Amanda, for, for um, asking me to do this in the first place. I will continue to do it, providing you all want me to do it. As I said, email me and I'll send you my little booklet. I might even... In fact, I will, I'll send you a, an audio so to keep you on track, okay? And all that's gonna be free. If you're want to, interested in working with me, if I, you think you wanna help work with me one-to-one, -one, I'm running these 15 minute uh, consultations, they're free. Um, so you can talk about where you wanna be in your life, whether it's to increase your um, ability as a hypnotherapist, <clears throat> if you'd like to do some training with me, do some mentor, me, mentoring, or whether you've got a personal thing you wanna achieve in your life, Sign up for one of those 15 minutes, it's free, and we can discuss it in person and do that, okay? So look, um, I wish you all the best. Um, I've got a funny throat today, um, but I'm sure it's not the bug. Um, I wish you all the best in everything you do. Take care of yourself, be kind to yourself, treat yourself with the same kindness you treat everyone else that you love, and we'll all get through this and we'll all be well, okay? So once again, thanks for joining me. Let me know if you want one of my books. I'll send it to you. That's going to be free. And uh, ask me any questions. If I can answer them, I will. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. All right, enjoy.